So the Duramax swap is already creating some issues. Sorry for the vulgar language. Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to a juicy OBS video. If you guys are excited about this very truck right here that's getting an LBZ Duramax swapped into it, and arguably going to be one of the sickest OBSs ever, because, well, I mean, obviously it's got Duramax in it. All right, all right, all right, all right, trigger warning, relax, everybody chill. It will be the sexiest OBS. He's got his safety glasses on for the triggeredness that's about to flow out of YouTube and he can't hear the hate. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd greatly appreciate a smash on that thumbs up button down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, definitely stick around. In today's video, guys, we are gonna be jumping into the front of the truck. If you can't recall, send it. That's a rivet out for you. We picked this thing up from Hunters in the last upload, but it was on some temporary suspension. Today, we are going to make that temporary suspension permanent. We've got some really sick components that I'm gonna be showing you guys momentarily, but what Jake's working on right now is actually pulling out the factory coil spring buckets. Those are no good for the four-wheel drive axle conversion that we're doing. This is an 05 plus axle. It actually came out of a 2012 Super Duty, 373 gears. We've got some temporary radius arm brackets in place. Those are gonna be coming off today as well and we're looking to bolt up the permanent suspension on this truck so we're actually featuring some ryd componentry in today's video that we picked up from cp addicts if you guys aren't familiar with cp addicts they are like the one-stop shop and the gurus i might add of the obs platforms they also have a bunch of stuff for square bodies dent sides the whole nine yards those guys have been extremely helpful in getting me up to speed with everything that i need to do to marry a duramax and convert a gas obs to a diesel 7.3 style OBS with 05 plus axles. It's a crazy merriment of a whole bunch of different tides, but it's been a fun project and well, we're about to start to do our part on it. Hunter had put 50 hours into building out the cross member that allows the OBS to have an LBZ motor in it. That motor's only got 90,000 miles and yes, it's got a six speed Allison transmission behind it with a manual four wheel drive gearbox. So we're quite literally taking what was a gas two wheel drive F350, making it somewhat compatible with 7.3 components for a diesel engine that's not a Ford produced engine and then putting new axles in it so that way it drives like a brand new truck. And speaking of brand new trucks, this brand new truck right here, well, it's a 2021, but it's essentially brand new, is up for grabs in the giveaway for Misfit and $30,000 cash ends July 3rd. That's only just a few days away and 20 times entries, this giveaway's max multiplier is live as we speak. So if you guys wanna grab some entries for that, you might be seeing yourself jumping into that thing every single day as your new daily driver. Sorry for the vulgar language. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are converting officially the two-wheel drive OBS crew cab long bed to four-wheel drive with 05 plus Super Duty axles. That is the official mod in which we are ensuing and the aftermarket has come up with some parts to do. And the aftermarket in this case is Ride Engineering, R-Y-D, pronounced Ride. I was just calling it R-Y-D for a while until I called them. Mark's been a big help to us over there, so I appreciate that dude. We've got their entire front end conversion kit right here. It includes radius arm brackets. It includes top hats for the coil buckets, call them, call them coil bucket brackets, that receives the top of the coil spring here and then the shock there, which will marry up perfectly to right here for the bottom of the coil spring and right there for the bottom shock. We've got our factory two-wheel drive ones removed. The rivets aren't all that bad, just a cutting wheel and uh, an impact hammer, an air hammer. The air hammer was life-saving. 
Tips on the air hammer didn't fare. So Not so good. <laughs> we had a powder coated Lollipop Red by Powderworks 717. Color came out great. Really excited about it. The kit also includes sway bar drop brackets for the 05 Plus sway bar. We've got this beautiful one right here. It's in perfect condition. Didn't even need powder coated. You see what I'm saying, guys? This thing's got that perfect patina look to it. It's absolutely fantastic. Then we've got our track bar drop bracket right here. And then we also added one other thing, kind of a little bit offline, but we've got a blue top steering box in here. Then we've got the ride pitman arm version so just a, a, I'm sidebarring here I'm sidebarring here but there's a lot of information that you need to know that I've figured out so if you want to put 05 axles on you can do one of two things you can get the conversion pitman arm which gets you from the splines of the blue top that mounts to the factory holes on the OBS that then has the proper pitch for the radius arm or you can do the opposite and drill new holes for an 05 plus steering box which then doesn't need the pitman arm but in my opinion going with the box that was destined exactly for this chassis made a lot of sense not only because it mounts right up the pitman arm made it very easy but also because all the steering lines will go right in versus changing all the steering lines and I, I didn't want to do that in this instance our ride scenario is a little bit different because we're converting a two-wheel drive frame to a four-wheel drive frame of, of sort so on a four-wheel drive truck you'd have to drill out basically two holes but on a two-wheel drive frame truck you actually have to drill a majority of the holes except that one right there that hole lines up pretty well with that hole but we have to drill one two three four five six seven holes to get the rest of them to line up these ones go here up underneath and then these are right kind of in this general vicinity we have some marks right there as you can see 17 and a half inches from this very radiator mount bracket that are going to get us started and then we're going to drill consistently across to get that thing mounted up in place so uh let's go yeah. all right here we go hopefully they're marked out right because uh there's no turning back or we just drill a few more holes that's a big deal aerodynamics gonna need it because it's gonna have a duramax in it and go real fast mm -hmm. one of the worst parts about doing lift kits like this they're made great i just hate drilling frames it can be very challenging but a good drill bit makes it possible not a sponsored ad but these maco hyper step bits are game changing don't even waste your time in anything in the big box stores buy these 350 bucks i believe is what they were which is steep but they have a warranty on every size down to an eighth of an inch i think they do that because the small ones break real easily but uh our half inch bit saves our is that a half inch no nah, he's a little beat up She's, she's seen, she's seen her days. Still works like a freaking charm. Yep. Speaking of charm, we have more holes to drill. Oh. Teamwork makes dream work. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah! I am in the middle of a <laughs> terrible hip cramp. <laughs> Actually, cry. Stretch it out, young girl. Oh, this whole getting old thing's bull. Good job, big girl. Oh Good job. Show them how it's done. Take notes, kids. You'll be there one day. <laughs> Drink plenty of water, kids. We've gotten so decent at welding in these parts that we actually have a never-ending supply of grinding wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so we're breaking out the welder, uh, mostly because on the driver's side, we are unable to punch through one of the holes for the bracket because where the hole needs to be, the back of the cross member actually bows back. These Duramax motor mounts are offset. So the driver's side one is in a different location than the passenger side one. If you could see through the block, the passenger side is over here, driver's side here. So this cross member, as you can see, comes across and then bows back to accommodate for that. So it's married in the middle. Where we need to tap through one of these holes is actually right where the cross member is welded extremely well to the back of the frame and we don't want that to be just a small little punch hole so we're gonna fill that in grind it down and it's going to be an empty void but it's better than looking at that in the case in point that we can't put the bolt through we have how many other ones eight more eight more other bolts. so we'll be seven, all right seven, seven bolts be eight, but it, be right. we'll be good whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Two different levels I can all right guys now i got that all done fortunately our boy logan taught me some tricks about welding now it's really easy to do spot welds like that. Anything where I gotta run a bead, still need a little bit of work. However, this is the final result, all sanded and smooth. All it needs is paint. There was previously a hole like right 
here, somewhere, somewhere right in here. However, that hole's clearly no longer there, and it'll look good when we have the bracket back on, and it's not just gonna be like an empty void, because that would have driven me absolutely nuts, knowing that there's a hole where we started to drill where the bolt should be, and there wasn't, it, I couldn't do it, my OCD would go nuts. So we filled the hole, we'll paint it, we'll get that all squared away, and then we're gonna be pretty much ready to throw suspension on this it's thing. All a game until you get played. So the Duramax swap is already creating some issues. Our driver's side went in without any problems whatsoever and we got lucky because completely at random, our upper bracket cleared the cross member. On this side, however, we did not get so lucky. Jake just welded up this hole and it looks better than factory. But we found that this hole and this hole are actually interfering with the 5 16 inch thick steel cross member that's welded in place. That was kind of just a fluke by chance. All of this was done somewhat blind, if you will. So we have a solution for that, and it requires actually filling in some of this hole and this hole up underneath. There's two bolts up underneath. One clears, one does not. And then we are actually going to get a little bit creative with our hardware. So rather than just not putting the bolts in at all, we decided that we are actually going to tap the frame. So we need to fill back in the hole and then tap out the proper size so we can use the appropriate tap to then thread the bolt into the chassis and that way we're secured it's just not with a fastener like that there's just a little bit of clearance up behind so we're gonna have to cut this bolt down and the other one up on the bottom so that way we can thread it in we'll probably throw some loctite on it and we'll be good to go So when it comes to custom, you'll need to cut. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for future reference, if you're ever gonna put an LBZ in an OBS, which I hope everybody does, because it's gonna be absolutely epic, take some notes, four-wheel drive, swap your two-wheel drive truck prior to doing so. It's one of those things that you would never know otherwise. And hindsight being 2020, complete clear line of sight, Hunter and I were laughing about how we should have four-wheel drive swapped it before we decided to put a Duramax in it, because that would have dictated the design of the front engine cross member and the rear trans cross member. So Jake's actively making some adjustments to get the radius arm bracket on my ride and I need to make some adjustments to the cross member because we're having an interference where the track bar bracket mounts up to the frame. So we're gonna utilize that hole right there and that hole right there, but we're running into issues right where that marker is. So following my marker around here, this little area that's about two and a half inches is actually causing a problem. So we're gonna actually trim that out because we can. Ultimately, this cross member is way, keep going forever and over-engineered for that motor. So we'll be okay to trim a little bit out. We need to do so in order to actually marry up that track bar bracket to the front of the cross member. Unfortunately, that is going to line up. It's just gonna kind of suck having to drill through it. But drilling is the theme of this video and this entire project very much so. All right guys, so we had to make a small little notch out to get the track bar bracket to fit up in here. We used two pre-existing holes that were on the frame rail. And then fortunately, Hunter, you knocked this one out of the park. We're gonna be referencing Hunter a lot in this project, guys, just because I've said it before, and I'll say it in other words, a lot of guessing was done in order to get this motor in here. And we wanted to maintain a factory angle. We wanted to maintain factory mounting style in the event that we pull the motor out in the future. Who knows, could happen, 1,000 horsepower. I mean, I mean, what, 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 what? Allergies acting up. But it worked out really well because it laterally lined up with the front of the cross member. Couldn't work out any better. So now we have the ability to actually bolt up the track bar to the track bar bracket, but we can't do that until the boys over here finish up the radius arm drop brackets. Jake and Josh have been absolutely crushing it. They got the right side on. Is the other side notched off the cross member? Yeah, all the, the cross members notched. Cross members have been notched now. It's just a matter of what, drilling holes? Yeah. Yes. How Jimmy Neutron is Jake's hair right now, though? Let's be real honest about it. My man's freaking breaking into the science up in here with the drill bits. Luckily, we only have one more side to drill into before we can call it good. But I need to say that the interior with that lollipop red is a pretty dang glorious combo. I absolutely love it. Gives you guys a quick little look here. The last thing that we need to work on are the sway bar drop brackets. I don't know how simple or complicated these are. Uh, very simple. So these little suckers, go up this mounts up in there Aww. like that that style brother 
I'm so excited right now. We did this all in a video. Truthfully, it was a little bit of a stretch, but we got it done. This man was hustling. I had to go out and run around a little bit today. You'll kind of see a little bit about what I'm talking about in Tuesday's upload. There's some really juicy stuff. You guys gotta look forward to that upload because man, there's a lot that I'm gonna be showing y'all. I've definitely been hiding some things. I'm sorry, but I'm not. You'll see soon. We're in, dude. We're in there. Yeah, no. All it needs is a coil spring and it's considered suspended. Coiled spring and a track bar. We can hook it up to the track bar bracket that we got in custom because of the cross member. We can then work that and then we can drop this thing down on its own weight. And then we can get eight ball off the freaking lift because it's a slacker sandbagger. Nah, it's too, that's too exciting. And then we can get this thing over to the lift, which will be very nice because there's a lot of other things suspension related that we still haven't even talked about yet. So if you guys are enjoying the OBS project, definitely smash that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already and grab your entries for misfit because that giveaway is ending in just about one week's time.